happy to join with us. We've had a busy day already. Uh, this morning we received a literally a semi truck full of food items that are uh, sitting inside my gym. People have been coming all morning picking up food. If you, but let me just say this: if you are in need of any food items, these are all uh, dairy. Uh, products that need to be put in refrigerators. There's uh, things like eggs. Uh, there's biscuits, yogurt. There's some cheese, some half and half. There's uh, beets. If you love beets, we got big bags of beets. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things. So if you want to come down here at 415 North Hobart Road, you are welcome to help yourself. If you have a neighbor that needs something, by all means, let them take them some, whatever you want to do. We'd love to have you just uh, get it. We have to get it out of here today because, again, it's all refrigerated. So because of that reason, we cannot store it. We're not going to be able to keep it with us. So if you can if you can take the opportunity to, uh, to come down, again, we're at 415 North Hobart Road, Hobart, Indiana, and you can join with us and you can welcome to uh, get a hold of that stuff. Uh, let's go to the Word. And, uh, uh, you know, we've just come off of Easter Sunday. What a great Easter we had. We uh, just enjoyed so much being able to present the message and the songs and all the different ones that participated with us. I, I still am just uh, overwhelmed by uh, the beauty of, of how the Holy Spirit speaks to hearts. And if you were able to catch our, uh, our Facebook feed and, and, and you were able to uh, watch the service, and, and be a part of that. We so thank you for joining with us. We do want to hear from you. We'll let you know a little bit more about that in just a little bit, but uh, uh, we're just delighted. I, I appreciate so much uh, Erica and Nathan, the beautiful drama they did at the end of our service. I appreciate so much that uh, Laura, Sister Laura, sang the, one of my favorite songs at Easter time is the Via Della Rosa, and she did just a superb job. And Sister Sally for the beautiful song that she sang. It just honored and lifted up the Lord. And then for Sister Tracy, who shared with uh, worship with her flags and just honored the Lord in that. I tell you what, it was just a, a beautiful time. People worked so hard. I appreciate Brad Ebert for working so hard to make uh, it happen for us. Sister Susan for uh, working behind the scenes and getting things ready. We, uh, Some of you may not know this, but Facebook and, and all the different media uh, places have been inundated with uh, so much of the traffic that Easter Sunday, it was really, really one of those challenging moments where we were uh, just saying, you know, Lord, we don't know what we're going to do, but we're trusting you. And, and we were able to go live and it was just a, a, a move of the Lord. I don't know churches all across the world, literally around the world, were celebrating Easter, celebrating Resurrection Sunday. And now we're moving into those times where from from the day of the resurrection, all the way then, we're going to be going up to Pentecost in June. It'll be Pentecost Sunday. And I tell you, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to what the Holy Spirit has to do with us. You know, we're still uh, staying in the house. We're still uh, not getting out uh, very much. And uh, it makes it very difficult, very testy, very trying for so many. And I know that's hard on you, but I know that the Lord is able to keep you. And I know the Lord is able to watch over you and just to uh, sustain you through all that you're going through. So we're trusting him and we're thanking God. Thanks so much for uh, just being a part of what we're doing. And, and you know, it is challenging. It's challenging for me as a pastor. It's challenging for uh, us as a congregation. You know, we're trying to reach as many people as we can, uh, making sure that we're staying in touch with everyone that we possibly can stay in touch with, doing all that we can to do that. And yet at the same time, we know that there are always those who can't connect to us who are unable to get onto our Zoom call, who are who are still challenging, uh, being challenged to try to figure out a way to stay connected. And we're looking for better ways to even connect with them. And we're looking, we're, we're doing everything we possibly can. I, I'm praising God. I'm thanking God because he's financially helping us. He's given us, uh, you know, our finances have, have uh, we've seen God move in the finances of our church, even through all of this. And, and boy, I, tell you, I can't, I can't thank you enough. Uh, for each and every one of you that have just given to uh, uh, to support us uh, through your prayers, through your financial giving, the various things that you're doing to ensure that we are able to do what we do. Thank you so very much. Again, from the depth of my heart, I love this church. 
I love you, and I'm so appreciative of every one of you that join with me every morning. The comments that you share with me, you, I get texts, uh, I get emails, uh, and all you know, and the different comments that we read uh, with people that are sharing with us, and 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 just uh, just knowing that we're able to uh, touch your life in this way, I, I'm just thankful to the Lord. I was thinking this morning, and I was, I was telling my wife. Uh, just uh, the other day we were talking about this. And I said, you know, I'm so thankful uh, to God. And I realized that through all of this, that it's the, it's the little things that I'm thankful for, just the little things. Uh, for example, the other Sunday, we were uh, not able to get on Facebook. We just prayed, you know, we just, our team just got together. We just prayed. And, and the next time we clicked on, we went right onto Facebook live and we were able to go live. Uh, this morning, we were able to I was praying before uh, we were get, I knew the shipment of food was coming in and it was going to be an entire semi over 1500 cartons and cases of, of stuff that we were receiving. And I thought, Lord, there's no way we're going to be able to get that all off the truck. There's just no way it's going to happen. And lo and behold, if the company, and I want to, I want to thank personally uh, Cisco and I want to thank uh, my friend, Rich Arnold, <coughs> who uh, reached out to me. Uh, to be able to make this happen. But uh, Cisco, when they came, they realized that we got to get this stuff off the truck. And they actually brought another truck to be able to cross load the, the, the stuff and then bring it in on a pallet, a powered pallet, Jack, to get it into our building. Uh, we would have never been able to do that. But they, that right there just shows me how just the little things God does in order for him to touch our lives and to let us know that if we're willing to be a vessel used by him, that he'll make a way, even when it looked like there was no way. Next thing I know, we put out a call for people to help. I come in and I find out, Lord, and lo and behold, uh, there are so many people here. Uh, the local food pantry came out and uh, uh, the fire department came out that give us a hand. And man, I tell you what, we were able to get uh, all of that unloaded and get it. And now we've been distributing it. And uh, I'm just, it's just those kinds of things, the way we've seen God move. I just am so thankful for how he blesses us. Well, in fact, you know what? Enough of my talk for a moment. Let's just pause for a moment. Would you pause with me? Would you, would you give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and his grace? Father, thank you. I can't help but give you thanks, God, because even in all the things that are going on, your hand of grace, your hand of mercy, your tender hand reaches out to us, God. You move, you enable us to do things, God, that we didn't think we'd be able to do. God, we're able to bless so many people, so many churches. We're just able, God, because you have opened a door for us. Lord, I, I never underestimate, never want to underestimate the power of one connection, the power of one phone call the power of one meeting, because God, I know one encounter changes everything. God, I believe that, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful, God, for people that touch our church, that God, even though here we are, not able to assemble in a, in a building, we're not able to come together yet, Lord, through connections, Lord, through the internet, through the live streaming, through the various outlets, that we're using, God, you are touching lives. People's lives are being changed. They're being transformed by the power of your word, just like your word said would happen. You sent your word to heal us of our diseases. You sent your word to transform our lives. I'm thinking about how, how, how blessed we are to know, God, that this word that we share doesn't just minister to people in our local community. God, it goes out. In fact, it literally can go around the world. I have relatives, God, that are, that are in Europe right now and in Great Britain. And, and, I, and Lord, to know that uh, yesterday they, they shared with me how thankful they were that they were able to hear the word. I never would have dreamed, God, we could do that. But look what we're doing. God, it's because of the blessings that you provide for us. So today, God, I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you for all those that make it possible. God, to know that you're with us and you're moving. We just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, you're probably wondering why I've got this old lampshade sitting on my, uh, holding in my hand, sitting on my lap here. And uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, I was uh, thinking about what we would be talking about this morning, and I was thinking about how oftentimes that we are, are dealing with things from our past. And so I, I thought I'd, I'd share this, this, uh, this time with you today, and let's talk about getting rid of, getting rid of the past. So if you have a Bible, you want to turn, you can go to the book of Exodus chapter 14. You can read uh, the, the entire story. The entire story of the Exodus is such a, such a beautiful story because it shows the hand of God working and ministering and moving in ways that uh, are miraculous. Literally, miracles took place. And I love how God done that. I love how that uh, one of the things that stands out to me about the story of, of the, the Egyptian slavery of Israel when they were enslaved is that after 430 years of slavery, God heard their prayer. God heard their prayer and delivered them. And you know, one of the things that amazes me about that is how that God answers our prayer. No matter how long it may seem to us, it's never too long for God. It's always right on time with God. And I, so don't give up. When God's moving in your life, if you believe God for something, maybe you have a dream or you have a vision that God gave you or something. And I know with you think, man, the circumstances right now, there's no way it's ever going to happen. I can promise you that if you'll trust the Lord, that he hears your prayer, if you seek his face, he'll answer you. He'll move in your life. He'll do something miraculous for you. So I, I know that, and I know, that's, I know it to be true because we've seen it happen, and we have this example for us. But I want to draw your attention to uh, Exodus chapter 14. I want you to look at verse 10 with me just for a moment, and I just want you to read this with me, if you can. It says, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, and they cried out to the Lord. You know, like I said, you know, 430 years of slavery can do something to you. And it can change the way you think. It can change the way you act. It can change the way you feel. When you've been, when you have been living a certain way for so long, it's hard to even imagine what it would be like if all of a sudden that life you had once known is no more. Now, for some of us who are believers in Jesus, most of us who believe in Christ, we understand what that's like. But, there's, but I can assure you that every one of us that have come into a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, where we become followers of Jesus and we have received him as Lord, the reality of that doesn't change sometimes how our mindset is and how we think and how we act and respond to certain circumstances early on in our Christian walk. For many people, it's difficult for them, even though that they've experienced a new life, Many of them still have old habits, old ways of thinking, old stuff is still going on in their lives. And, and, and this, is, uh, this is what I want to talk about this morning, especially from the vantage point that we read here in Exodus chapter 14. If you understand the story, you know that by now uh, the uh, Egyptians have let the children of Israel go. They've freed them. They've let them. They've let them. Uh, out of their bondage, and now they're getting ready to leave, and and their leaving wagons are filled, and not only are they filled with their personal belongings, but the Bible even talks about how that the Egyptians brought to the Isra the Israelites, brought to them literally wagon loads of of fine gold and jewels and precious garments and all kinds of things, and I. I, I tend to think that that uh, is really kind of back payment for all the work that they had done back in the past when they were when they were slaves in Egypt and worked so hard to build the palatial palaces and the, all the all the things that uh, that the Egyptians required. Uh, they were built on the backs of slaves as they were beaten by the taskmasters to make it happen. And now, as they were exiting out of Egypt, they were taking with them the back pay of 430 years of slavery, and there it was on these wagons, so much so that they were just uh, inundated. They just kept bringing it and bringing it and bringing it, and I just thought, man, you know, God is a good God, 
God knows how to take the things, you know, uh, what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around and made it good. That, to me, is just tremendous how God does that. And I thought about how that because of the Egyptians and the slavery that they were in and because they lived under such heavy taskmasters and they lived in, in these uh, places where they, they, were, they were required to eat only what uh, the slave masters gave them. They were lived their lives only the way the slave masters would let them. They, uh, you know, their lives were literally controlled the sun up to sun down uh, by the Egyptians. And now all of a sudden, they're, they're leaving Egypt and they're no longer there. And I thought, wow, isn't that something? Here they are, you know, uh, walking out as they are. And, and I think about, you know, the fathers and the grandfathers and the great grandfathers who were slaves before them. And I think about how that, uh, you know, this way of life was so much a part of them that, and yet involved in that was the story and the promise and the prayer that one day we would be delivered, and now they are. You know, I, I, I just thought, man, this has got to be something. I, I thought, what, I wonder what it must have been like for guys like Caleb and Joshua. And uh, I wonder if Caleb could say, you know, at, at this early state, give me the mountain that we hear him say later on in the story, or, or Joshua to say that as for me and my house will serve the Lord. I'm sure that, that their faith on that day was like all of a sudden inundated with, with an over, overwhelming sense that God is for us and not against us, that after 430 years, look where we are and look how we're moving about. And I, and I thought about that, and then I thought, I wonder how many people that were involved out of these millions of people that were coming out of Egypt, how many of them still were holding on to their past? How many people were still concerned about the Egyptians? In fact, the point of the story where we are in, in Exodus 14 is where the uh, Israelites are coming to where the, the, uh, the sea is, and they can't cross the sea, and all of a sudden they look behind them, and there are the Egyptians. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had to look over your shoulder? Have you ever had to look to your past? Have you ever had to look back? How many people, maybe some of you that are listening to me right now, how many of you are living your life in the present, but always thinking about your past. Think about that for a moment. Living your life as if you're living, looking ahead, but instead of really looking ahead, what you're doing is you got your eyes tilted upward to the rearview mirror, and you're looking behind you. That's, that's a hard way to live, isn't it? There's this, this, this idea of, of thinking about what could have been or what should have been or and how many people are living their lives you know in, defeated because they allow their past to hover over their heads like a dark cloud following them everywhere they go and how horrible it must be for you to live that way thinking that I want to get ahead I want to move forward but I just find myself as soon as I think I can, my past begins to haunt me. My past. Some of you that are, 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 are thinking about walking with Christ, thinking, I, I would love to be a Christ follower, but man, my past is so bad. You know, one of the things I discovered about Satan, I discovered how that he loves to haunt us with our past. He just loves to bring the past up to us. And what does he do? He uses things like worry, intimidation, twisting the facts, magnifying things so out of proportion that he, and he tries to create unreal things in our minds in order for us not to move forward. It's so distorted. It, it, it's almost like sometimes the things that are going in our minds are like a, a bad Stephen King movie, you know, that's just horror flick that's just playing out in our minds and it's like man i i just i want to but i i'm haunted by it i can't move beyond it 
And I thought about that. And I thought, you know, isn't it any wonder that God would speak through the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10? Listen to what he said. For we, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when our, your obedience is fulfilled. Think about that. Think about what God said he can do for us. You know, I... I, I when I think about this story and I think about the Bible, I think about uh, men and women of the scriptures who uh, had, you know, a past that, you know, many would say, oh, I wouldn't be proud of that. Uh, they were not, you know, your, your uh, perfect believer, perfect Christian, if you will. And, and, and Satan often uses that. And, and he reminds us of our failures and reminds us of our mistakes and reminds us of our, of our areas where we faltered. But, you know, you're in good company because I think about, man, you know, Abraham, you know, Abraham lied. I think about Isaac, you know, uh, I think about his life. I think about Jacob. I think about how Jacob, you know, the Bible says his Jacob meant, you know, conniver. You know, he, you know, not, you know, think about that. He, you know, he, he, he was a schemer. Uh, Moses, even, the one who's leading the people of Israel right now, he was a murderer. Uh, then I think about Rahab, Rahab the harlot. And then yet the Bible says that Rahab, out of her lineage came, comes the Son of God. That to me is powerful. Uh, David, you know, King David, the greatest king of all Israel, they, they, they still to this day, you know, talk about David because they know that the promise of God was that uh, the kingdom of David would never end, the throne. Uh, and, and yet David committed adultery and he even murdered. Solomon allowed idolatry. Elijah doubted. Peter denied Christ. Saul or Paul as we know him today, Paul killed Christians. You know, I'm glad that God does not consult my past to determine my future. Think about that. If God did that, where would we be? And when I think about this story, I think about how that God brought the people of, of Israel out. And the Bible says that he gave Moses instruction to tell the people to move uh, at, toward this place uh, that was called uh, Phihalroth and Migdal and the sea. It's in that spot, that, that place, Migdal, where God told them to camp. You know what that means? It, it represents a place of fear and helplessness. Now think about that. God led them all the way to this place where they had to confront their fears and where they were helpless. It is here that God is going to speak to them. Why? Because listen, you can't move into the promise God has for you until you get rid of the things of your past that are in your life holding you back. In other words, God can't let them enter into the promise as long as they still have Egypt inside of them. And it's easy for us to move you know, uh, into this place of faith in Christ and say, you know what, I'm going to trust God. He's going to get us out of here and he's going to move. But how do I deal with this part of knowing that I've got all this past stuff in my life that I've got to deal with in, in, that is in my mind? And I got to, well, let me give you just some quick things here, okay? Number one, you got to learn to stand still, all right? You got to learn to stand still. Now, now if, if, if you were to, to, to look at this story, you would hear the people crying out. They said, why have you brought us out here to die in the wilderness? Wasn't it enough for us to have to have graves in Egypt? What have you done to us? And they just go on and on and on and on. And, and they're, they're, they're crying out and they're crying out and, they're, and all these things. And, 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 and they hear God, what God does is he brings them to this place where they have to just stop. They can't go forward. They can't go backward. The, you know, uh, the Red Sea's in front of them. Pharaoh's army's behind them. 
The enemy's coming. What does God say? God says, stand still. But the enemy's getting closer. What does God say? Stand still. In fact, when you read, he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still. Because if you stand still, God is going to move. Sometimes you just have to quit. You guys got to quit what you're doing <clears throat> for this moment. Just pause. Listen to what God is. Sometimes God wants us to stop long enough so that we can regain our focus. Why? God's about to do something. So that when you stop and you stand still, then the second thing is you can see God. You can't see God if you're continually looking at all your surroundings. It's hard for you to see God whenever you're, whenever you're seeing the enemy, you know, whenever you're there. Uh, but boy, I tell you what, if you could just stop and, and see God just for a moment. Now, you know the difference between uh, being at peace and being relaxed. You know, relaxed is, you know, is, is, is when you're, you know, uh, you prop up your feet, and you, you know, you're sipping on a cup of coffee. But peace is standing in the midst of the storm, knowing that God is going to help you. And peace is what, what will calm the storm. Peace is what he will bring to you. And I'll tell you what, you know, the Bible says in Isaiah 26 and 3, he said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So you've got to hold your peace. When you see God, you can hold your peace. There's no mountain without a valley. There's no solution without a problem. There's no song without sorrow. There's no dreams without some discontent in our lives. There's no strength without some pain. My goodness, you're not going to have courage without some fear. You're not going to have victory unless you have a battle. You can't have success without sacrifice. You can't have healing unless you have a wound. You can't even have a miracle without having a need. I think about how we got that truckload. I, thought, the only, I know God performs miracles because there's a need out there. We have needs right now. Peace. You can't have peace without peril. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no character without the anvil and the hammer of God just coming against you and just chipping away at all the stuff of your life. So when you find yourself, stand still. See God, hold your peace, and watch this. The final thing was this. If you read the story in Exodus 14, God begins to say, look, the enemy you see today, you'll see no more. And in fact, God even tells Moses, Moses, why are you standing here? Why are you even talking to me like this? Why are you crying out? He says, I want you to get moving. Get moving. Where are we going to go, God? What are you going to do, God? God says this, forget the things that are behind you. Look ahead of you. But God, there's, there's even more challenges in front of me. Just step forward. If you'll step forward the way I ask you to, God says, I'm going to move in ways you never dreamed. Would you let him do it for you today? I'll tell you what, the truth of the matter is, if you'll stand still, if you'll just see God, because you can't, listen, you can't see God if you're looking at your past. So stand still, see God, let peace, let his peace come. When it does, here's what will happen. You'll take the step. And you know what will take place? God will step ahead of you. He's already, he's already made the way. He's already doing it. He's moving. Slavery is behind you. Freedom is in front of you. That's what Jesus wants to do. That's why we celebrated yesterday. So that our past can be our past and our future can be our future. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. If you need a new future, put your trust in Him. That's why He came. That's why He came. Father, I just ask you in the name of Jesus to speak, Lord, to the hearts of people right now. Touch their lives. God, let them see. God, their past is in the past. They can't change it now. It's, in fact, you've already defeated everything in the past. Your, the Bible says that your blood not only covers, it cleanses and washes away everything of our past. Why? So that we can have a future. Lord, that's what we desire, a future in you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us today. Shelter daily in his word.